Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Intercollegiate Slippy. I am Hada, joined by the illustrious coffee. Welcome, sir. I believe this is your first cast with us, right? Quite is. Very excited. All right, we got two dirty peach mains here to commentate a pretty awesome set. We've got um, got CU versus uh, Stony Brook University. So we have uh, a couple awesome players lined up for you guys. We have the likes of Pat Attack, if you guys have just joined us. For the last set, Pat Attack is one of our illustrious commentators as well. We have Blizzard Beam, the Jigglypuff, Eob the Sheik, Epangu the Falco, and then ending us off, the Hbox Slayer himself, Young Whiskers, the Yoshi player. For Stony Brook, we've got Storm, the Captain Falcon, El Pag, the Peach player. I love Brooklyn Nine Nine, the Fox player. I love that tag. Fatty Ass is the Sheik, and Red Matic, the Fox player. There's definitely going to be a lot of pressure. Um, to be able to like contain somebody like a big name like Whiskers, and you got to think that they're planning around their counter pick, and like that's probably been a lot of where their strategy has been at so far. Yeah, Stony Brook also is one of my favorite com- uh, universities to commentate for because they are so excited in the Twitch chat. Shout outs to you guys, by the way, if you are in the Twitch chat. And guys, I'm just gonna plug this in because I've done this hundreds of dozens of times. Please go ahead. And use those channel points and redeem them for real cash prizes at the end of the circuit. If you guys are in the top donators of channel points, you are eligible for actual shmoney. Real shmoney. How cool is that? And usually, if you get first at a net play tournament, you don't even get any money at all. Yes, yeah, so just by watching a net play tournament, you can make money. Actually, unreal. And uh, did you know, Coffee, that if you subscribe, to intercollegiate Libby, you get 2.5 times the channel points um, accumulated in your account. I see some value there. There's some excellent value for $5 a month or for free with Twitch Prime. You can take money out of Jeff Bezos's pocket, put it in the pocket of intercollegiate Slippy, and then make money yourself. How crazy is that? Actually, unreal value. Crazy value. So guys, thank you guys so much for joining us. We have have some excellent melee coming your way. We have, let's see, who do we have locked in real quick? We have... Do we have uh, have players lucky yet? Who do we have locked in? I need to, uh, let me see, clear this up. Okay. All right, we're going to hop in real quick right here. Uh, We have, uh, it's a little blurry on my end. I can't really read it. I don't know why it's blurry. Hang on. Oh, wait. Hold the phone. I, okay, I love Brooklyn versus... Um, I think I saw a Fox Ditto. Yes. Looks like a Fox so Ditto. I think that definitely makes sense. Fox is mm-hmm. one of like the most popular leads. I feel like for Cruz, he's very safe. It's hard to counterpick him without a, a stage. So on a neutral stage, Fox will almost always have a winning matchup. Or even if it's like the worst case is like Marth. He'll always be like fine. And that kind of makes him a pretty sensible lead. Yeah. Back in the- yeah, it's definitely the easiest thing to blind pick. If you guys have any sort of idea into the ideas of drafting in other esports like League of Legends or Dota, the first pick is traditionally called the blind pick. And you want to use that as like your safest pick in the matchups. So that definitely makes sense to throw your Fox in first or throw in one of your stronger, harder to counter pick players first. Looks like we already hop into a fox. Get a pretty early X guard sequence coming DNA. out here. Mm-hmm. Oh, burned by the up B. It's on Cruz. Fox's recovery, impossible to contest. It's just going to always trade, always get you out of those situations. All right, it's definitely an early little lead here for Seagull. Doing a pretty good job patrolling center stage here, trying to find an opening here. A little percentage, nice knockdown here, potential. Attack. Oh. Okay, juicy shine up slash here to clean up the first stock. Looks like uh, I love Brooklyn Nine Nine is going to be taking the early lead here for the side of Stony Brook. So get up attack gets punished. All right, not too bad coming out from Seagal. Four percent built up. Dave percent. Dave four percent was on commentator commentary earlier today. Really cool to see him come out and support on uh, the Kent State side of. Collegiate Smash. Looks like uh, Isla Booker 99 is going to be edge guarded here by Seagal as well. Great little rinse and refresh off the left side platform. Well, left side platform. We're back in neutral. Definitely. 
what makes Fox so interesting in Cruise is that even when you're in the lead, you just never feel safe because so much of Cruise is not both about just getting the lead, but making your lead as wide as possible. And you have to wonder if even if one of these players jumps out, if that's going to change how they're playing because they're already going to get too scared of trying to just hold down a stock. All right, and as we're saying that, you know, I love Brooklyn Nine-Nine. We're cleaning up an early stock with a really aggressive side B from the ledge. Good punish with that up smash. Looks like Isla Brooklyn Nine Nine is going to be working on a pretty little, substan pretty substantial lead here, trying to make build up some extra credit here, try to lengthen out and give his uh, team the counter pick advantage moving into the next player. One up smash doesn't combo, but all right, gets that platform tech chase re grab, builds up a decent amount of percent. Percent is even, but the stock advantage is not. Isla Brooklyn Nine Nine gets a great little ledge dash back to center stage here, trying to find another little opening. See what he can do to get this knockdown. Big punish oppor opportunity here. Edge guard sequence will start up here, but great sweet spot from Seagull. Oh, gets that F smash. Good DI though. All right, Strong we'll, re back. Yeah, we'll refresh it here. Great edge guard sequence. Does not get the up smash on the oh, Firefox. Yeah. And the I Love Brooklyn 99 will clean up the stock as with a juicy little reversal there. Have a two stock advantage, but 129 is a little scary and, and we'll take yeah, it there. Here's the feeling if you're Seagal is, you know, even from this point, if it's just uh, a one stock victory for I Love Brooklyn 99, in some sense you're a little happy about it. And I feel like that kind of like achievable goal kind of almost helps your mentality out as a player where it's not just like, oh, I need to win. But if you just think like, how can I help my team in this moment? That can sometimes, you know, build to a comeback before it even starts but uh i love brooklyn 99 has been controlling almost all that stock as i was saying then i love brooklyn 99 just gonna hold shield there will shield that up smash trying to get one more edge guard to clean it up and bring a two stock advantage into the next player all right and this will runs and refresh oh. and the taunt to take it home i love brooklyn 99 looking good yeah, it could be aggressive too, because I think you want a ton. You want to get your team into the game, but you never know. They could just get the opponent. You don't want to give them that uh, that bulletin board material. Mm -hmm. All right, Columbia University down in the stock count, down in the player count now. So looking like we're gonna have a counter pick situation here. Two stocks of I love Brooklyn Nine Nine, yeah. and you have to imagine what is gonna be your best bet to not only take these two stocks from I love Brooklyn Nine Nine, but also mitigate your counter pick ability moving into the set after that. That's true. Like you might be tempted to throw out like I'm not, but like something for instance, like a Marth. Like if you're just gonna get counter picked right back with Sheik right mm -hmm. after you versus a fox it doesn't even make the counter pick necessarily all that strong mm -hmm. so like for instance a falco here a falco would make a lot of sense mm -hmm. uh, it's all about just considering the swing back because now that you're down two stocks you're gonna have to equalize somewhere you're gonna have to pick so they're gonna go in with marth here so yeah. we'll see how it looks like um pad attack the marth player will be the one checking in uh, one of our local commentators here in the um slippy circuit here in the intercollegiate slippy circuit so big ups to him for putting in so much work not only for columbia but also for the intercollegiate scene as a whole so gonna see how much he can do he did on commentary I mentioned he only took one stock last week so we're gonna have to see if he can um at least increase that potential in this uh crew battle here maybe taking both of these off of i love brooklyn 99. there's a little bit of element of where if you want somebody, you just want to like give them, you know, maybe not a too high pressure situation, just let them get in their groove. I think sort of these early rounds and maybe not even the lead specifically, which kind of like puts the burden on you for like getting the lead. But this seems like to be like a good sense and maybe a good spot for somebody who just needs to feel out their game a little bit. Mm -hmm. Just get them a nice, relatively low pressure situation. You know, Pat's a pretty solid player, you know, but a bunch of respect on to Pat attack. We're just going to have to see if he can, uh, if he could put this down, you know, see if he can uh, clean this up and at least give himself a good opportunity to at least take some of this lead back for Columbia. And we're going to straight to Pokemon Stadium. Yeah, this is definitely the the new age counter pick. I think for a long time, people just kind of accept, I mean, especially in like the transformation age, that, um, 
that Fox was just going to win here, but I think people realized how great the platforms are for Marth and how much better he can use horizontal space than uh, we previously thought. But it looks like a 9-9 is coming outside of, coming out of the gate fast. You get that down tilt combo. That's definitely one of like the premium launchers for uh, Fox at mid percent. All right, and are you pretty clean? Ninety-eight percent reversal situation potential, Ooh. but that attack does not confirm off of it. Aggressive down air will get the down tilt cheese potentially. Great air dodge for I love Brooklyn nine nine. All right, it looks like he's gonna back dance, finds his grab. Uh oh, tipper. All right, I love Brooklyn nine nine with a pretty good little chase down here. Two nares and an edge guard sequence to boot, and will just Marth killer him for the first stock. Yeah, I feel like that's such a huge like. It's such a huge, like, low, just like, ah, when you get, um, gimped by Mark. But then at the same time, if you get, like, down thrown, and then you make it out, and you make it out unscathed, that can be such, like, a huge boost to your mentality. That can just make you really feel like you're in the game right now. Uh-oh, right. big grab. All right, let's see if he can get the little uh, combination here. We'll get that F smash into the refresh edge guard sequence. We'll get an accidental teeter there. And we'll find another grab here again in these quarters, so... Pat Attack is finding these grabs in the corner, so we're just gonna see if he can get these confirms, maybe shake off some nerves and uh, clean up these stocks here. Er, really aggressive up B there and will get punished. Oh, it just lands down. Just calls him, calls him dashing through. Uh, one more F smash should do it. I don't know about right. staying on the ledge, but it looked like it was close, but he got it. All right, we'll just roll that up. So two stocks for one, pretty good. Um, Sock economics here from I Love Brooklyn 99. Pat Attack really needs to clean uh -oh. this up so he can at least uh, maintain there. a little bit of advantage here for Columbia. He calls out that corner grab this time. He's uh, already adapting to that. So you see down smash. Oh, I love that air dodge. It's actually very precise. All right, Pat Attack with another air dodge, but will just get rinse and repeat up throw up air. And the taunt oh. on the logo walks, <laughs> marches it straight down into the 50 yard line and lets him know. All right, up throw, up air on these platform tech chases here. I love Brooklyn Nine Nines letting Pat attack. No, is this going to be another week where he only takes one stock? And it just might be a little bit of a refresh backer has his Back one mix he up. Like one chance, and he's dead. Oh, and he out. Oh, Pat attack with his second week in a row, only putting one down for Columbia. You know. I, you know, I, I'm hoping he's the brains of the organization. Like he's, what's it called? The, um, the in-game leader, the IGL, you know, like he's the guy he's like, he's not necessarily top fragging, but he's like the, the strategic mind. So let's hope that if, um, Definitely something <laughs> to be said for leadership of these kind of crews, you just need somebody to go out there and make that statement. You know, mm -hmm. maybe even if you don't have all that many stocks, if you go in, you get hype, you get people going, that's all you need sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm just hoping that, um, that Pat Attack can hopefully bring it back. Maybe next week he can do us. He can bring us two, three, four, maybe five stocks. One of these weeks, Pat's gonna pop off, and I'm I'm hoping that I'm there for it. All right, so looking into our next counter pick, I love Brooklyn Nine Nine is doing a really good job setting up his team for success. E Pengu, aka Zane, aka the best interview of correspondent in the melee community, <laughs> will be the counter pick here. E Pangu's Falco. Counter pick makes a lot of sense. I mean, now, especially, you know, it was definitely the case before, but now you have to start thinking ahead and thinking about how you're going to prevent your team from falling even more behind from like the possible counter pick coming from the other side. So we'll see here, start out with Falco. And then I believe they have a, the other team is a Peach player, though. So yes, they do. We'll see. They kind of who I imagine they might go with, but mm -hmm. we'll see how it plays out. They have, uh, they still have Elpag, the Peach, Storm, the Captain Falcon, which I'm assuming they would probably save for Whiskers. Uh, Fatty Acids, the Sheik, and um, Red Matic, the Fox. Also, you probably could save the Peach for Whiskers as well. Peach actually also does pretty well in Geoshis as well. One of my favorite matchups, actually. It's really fun. Oh, yeah, I think that's, um, at the same time, though, I think somebody like Whiskers, because I um, I think I played Whiskers at uh, Hax's nightclub, I want to say, mm -hmm. or me. But I think uh, sort of this region in general, 
kind of has a lot of Peach players. And from when I played Whiskers, I remember him being very strong at the matchup and very much willing to frustrate people. So I think even though the counter pick is looming, they might just be tempted to say, well, we'll just do whatever gives us the most stops and the most chances versus Whiskers. Right. And as opposed to putting all their eggs on just one player, even in a good matchup, to take it through. Truly the idea of putting all your eggs into that Yoshi counter pick basket. So I had to, sorry, I had to pull that little pun. This is my bad. No. <laughs> all right, guys. Hey, everyone, thank you for following the stream. You guys are doing us a really great service. Thank you guys so much for supporting Intercollegiate Slippy. We are jumping in with I Love Brooklyn 99's last stock versus E Pangu jumping in with a fresh four. Let's see what he can do. Starting Yoshis. Oh, not starting Yoshis. So Ready, go. All right, Stadium will be the pick. We're just waiting for these stocks to fall. And um, let's get some percent. Let's get some uh, predictions, guys. Do we think I Love Brooklyn can bring us one more stock for the boys? Can I Love Brooklyn take one more? All right, already E Pangu with a pretty decent punish here. Good chase down, but does get grabbed. Uh oh. See, that's sort of, that's another uh, kind of plus of Fox is that you know sometimes if you're a little scared, you're not hitting all your full combos because of nerves. You sometimes just get like a quick shine or something. That might be an area where uh, Fox gains a little bit of an edge. All right, Zane finds a shine right here. Shine back air. We'll put on a little bit of percent. Juicy one hit forward air. But in a different world, that could have been a suicide there. That would have been sick. That would have been shanasty coming out from Zane. But 105% to 79. Next big neutral interaction could spell a stock for either side here. Looks like Zane's doing a pretty good job of using full hop here. Will get tech chased with the dash tag. Edge guard sequence for I Love Brooklyn. Will not find it through, but does get a grab. Up throw, up oh. air. And oh, oh, even with some pretty that solid yai. Unlucky, and it looks like I Love Brooklyn will take nine stocks. E Pangu will clean this up with a refresh there. 11, I'm sorry, nine stocks for I Love Brooklyn 99. Nine. Pretty honestly, nine stocks for I Love Brooklyn 99 nine seems pretty comedically brilliant. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's just that's such a strong momentum shift, too. Like, mm -hmm. now you have to now. Not only are you forcing them to like sort of play it out, but now they have to think where in the world are going to get all these stops. We're going to make this comeback because I don't know if you can trust a character like Yoshi to make it through multiple stage counter picks. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, right now we have to look and see who this potential counter pick could be coming in for E Pengu. Like we discussed earlier, El Pag, the Peach player, could definitely be a strong pick. It, but again, like. Falks and Falco was just one of those characters where if you're feeling extraordinarily confident in the matchup or if you just feel like your case for getting counterpicked in in the inverse is um, pretty low, that might also be the choice. So maybe throwing in the Sheik and then trying to drag out the Jigglypuff might also be a good idea. So we'll have to see who yeah. Stony Brook decides to send in in the wake of I love Brooklyn 99 giving them such a dominant advantage. Uh, Sheik pick, it could conditionally make sense. I think that depends a lot on how much you trust the Sheik to be able to reaction tech chase under pressure. I think that sort of would change a lot of the outlook on how you would expect them to do. And I think especially if you want to save the Peach for Whiskers down the line. I think and like we're saying, you know, Fatty Acid, the Sheik player, will be locked in. So Fatty Acid's four stocks versus E Pangu's three. I, you know... It might be commentator bias for to big up, you know, my fellow commentators, but I've seen Zayn win these. Zayn can bring it back. We'll see. We'll see how he can do. I mean, it's still plenty early in the crew battle. We aren't in like some sort of one in a million situation anyway. Like if Pengu even takes like if he just like loses two, takes four or something like that, I think uh Columbia could be entirely back in it. And I think oh, sort of totally. that leeway mm -hmm. might give them a little bit of mentality boost they need to equalize this. Yeah. You know, we have to continue to uh, keep in mind, you know, that top player presence. I've discussed this every time I've been on commentary of these crew battles is 
a lot of the times you'll see these crews where it's either an amalgamation of a bunch of upper mid-level players that are all pretty solid. They're the guys that they'll go to the big house and go two and two, maybe three and two in their pool. They'll do fine. But then you'll have a crew with maybe a few of those guys, maybe one guy that's not too great just to fill it up. But then you have a Whiskers, then you have a Foxy Grandpa, then you have a Zane, a Ginger, someone like that, who is just... They're there to 20 stock a crew. They're there to 12 stock, 16 stock a crew. We, we saw in the commentary set that I had two hours ago, Foxy Grandpa took 12 stocks. Um, Aklo's older brother from New York. So, you know, you have to keep in mind that there is that potential where if you have that top player, they can swing it. They can 100% swing it. There's massive levels in Melee. Yeah. And I think especially, too, I think that sort of especially plays out when you see how it affects like the decisions that the other team has to make beforehand. Like, you spend so much time obsessing over one player, there's still going to be a whole bunch of other decent players behind them, and that sort of makes that such a big roadblock to get over. And that's what makes it really difficult to in, in events like this, especially in collegiate crews, because you'll have like the 2014 Irvine crew that had CDK, Squid, Face Roll, and uh, two other like upper upper top SoCal players, and um, things like you know Georgia Tech when uh, Drug Fox was on that lineup, and uh, currently you know we have crews like that for Michigan who have uh, Morse code and heart trick. So we're gonna have to see if uh, those crews tend to come back, and we'll have to see how they do moving forward in circuit. But we're hopping in right here. E Pengu already wow. getting a pretty substantial amount of percent taken from him. It definitely seems like Fatty Acids, he's, did, he's already been like very strong. As soon as he got that confirm of a missed tech from an F tilt, he was just going to town on that stock. And I feel like that's exactly what you wanted, exactly why you went for this counter pick coming from Stony Brook. All right, Fatty Acids already built up a pretty substantial stock and percent advantage here. But Zane finds a pretty juicy shine here. Cannot get too much confirmation out of it, though. Great laser grab. Laser grab. Trace down with these running dares. So I think we may have seen a bit of a pattern. He, again, went for the up smash, looking for tech in place or possibly no tech. And I think if that's not just a read, that's just kind of like what he does, that could possibly let E Pengu stretch out a couple of these stocks for a few more neutral wins. And that, you know, coming from Columbia's perspective, you need every little bit you can get. All right, we'll just recycle the ledge here. Great strong hit of back air. E Pengu will clean this up stock for stock right now, but 98% is a little worrisome if you're from Columbia right now. F tilt. Uh oh. Oh, does not get a strong reversal there, but nice down tilt to get this little refresh pop up. One edge guard sequence. Great angle from E Pengu. We'll refresh one more time. Finds his way back to stage. gonna take his time find his way back to stage double laser off the ledge doing too not too bad of a job trying to get his way out of the corner but fatty acids will hold strong and seal away the stock with the cross up there yeah fatty acids has definitely shown very been very willing to just jump up and challenge falco on these platforms you know even though shield dropping is so prevalent and it's definitely like something that every player is able to do now at the same time you can just catch movement you can catch people not expecting you all right, and looks like we're going to be going ahead and refresh this situation here. Nice little tech chase coming out from Fatty Acids. And we're going to clean up this situation here. Great combination here coming out from Epangu. Pretty decent damage here. Shine pressure with the down air refresh here. Going to go ahead and try to fit one more opening here. Could spell the opening of maybe a It'll stock tank. Aggressive up B. We'll yeah, try to clean up one more. Thing. All right, and we'll just roll up and... Fatty Ass is actually doing a pretty good job cleaning it up here. I think he definitely showed a lot of strong points. He was able to, besides the second stock, he's able to finish things off fairly efficiently. Mm -hmm. And as a Sheik player, that's the only real threat is that Falco will just accidentally live too long or you're not able to start your combos on him. And uh, Fatty Acid showed none of those problems. And I think that showed that that was a very good choice mm -hmm. coming from Stony. There's a really strong... That was a really strong counter pick situation there. And um, definitely a really good choice coming out from uh, Stony Brook. So Stony Brook with, again, a stronger advantage. And Whiskers is bit, has been dragged out. Whiskers will be the counter pick against Fatty Acid here. 
Yeah, I feel like that's always interesting because not only are you like choosing to be aggressive with like your top player or your best player, you're also forcing somebody else to be the anchor. And I wonder if that was sort of somebody else's call and he's like, you know, let me be out. I'm going to be the guy who's going to take a bunch of shots. Or somebody else is like, I'm fine anchoring. I can handle this. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. It's definitely a pretty interesting pick. So especially the Yoshi coming in against three stocks of Sheik. So you have to imagine that Whiskers is very confident that maybe if I can get a lead against my hardest counter pick, arguably my hardest counter pick in the matchup here, then I can go on a run and maybe um, shorten the deficit here. So we're going to have to see how he can manage to um, at least bring some life back into Columbia. Battlefield will be the lock-in. So three Makes stocks sense. of Sheik versus four of Whiskers' is Yoshi. So now I think, as the Sheik player, I think you have the widest advantage. And I think when you're in this, like, no pressure, still big lead of seven stocks, I think this is... This might be a very good chance for Stony Brook. They can just take a big dent out of Whiskers now. That sort of makes everybody else a little more relieved. Whereas, mm -hmm. you know, in the other world where Whiskers come... Oh, they don't know where he is? Oh, uh, so he's just not responding to pings here. Oh, oh no. So Whiskers actually had no choice but to come in. That's um that's a little bit worrisome from the side of Columbia, so hopefully um Blizzard Beam is not caught in a blizzard and uh hopefully he's alright to come and help anchor this crew battle. Oh Whiskers is rolling around. Got caught in the It's actually the so hard to catch that roll. Uh, there's a couple of Yoshi players in Ohio who just love to roll around and uh frustrate frustrate players because their uh, their shield is so weird out of that roll animation uh oh one up air combo no oh, nice all right one more down tilt and i think here we're sort of seeing fatty acids he's sort of like doing what i would suspect you need to do you know you're not really gonna out punish yoshi you're not gonna go hard you just need to poke take your openings when they come and just stay as mobile as yoshi is you don't want to get pinned down and put into shield and let him fare your shield or your crash cancel because that's how yoshi can get any big combo started all right, we'll just go ahead and refresh, grab that ledge. Great uh -oh. arms coming out from Fatty Acids, but we'll get caught out one more time. And uh, already Whiskers, 100%, uh, so pretty good little percentage trade, but the first stock trade situation will go to Whiskers. Whiskers with an early punish, but we'll get crouch canceled. One grab into fair, uh, double jump still in the pocket. Great air dodge and the drift to find his way back to the ledge here. Right. Bills, yeah. Trading stocks, this is honestly all you need coming from uh, Stony Brook side. You know, Stony Brook already looking pretty strong here, you know. Trading stocks with a player who's literally beaten Hungrybox in tournament um, is uh, definitely not a small feat yeah. for anyone. Uh-oh. Big down smash? There? Uh, ooh. ooh. Nice nair. Maybe a little bit of a DI next time. All right, tries to get a movement mix up here, but these trading hits are so dangerous because you can't afford it. Take a lot of needless percent here if you're Whiskers. And Yoshi is super tanky, but you know at the same note, you can't just be um, taking needless percent here because you're trying to play for every single neutral win in crew battles here. And I think Sheik especially in this matchup is one of the characters who I would say doesn't really freak out as much when Yoshi gets to live to a hyper, you know, like Falco, or, you know, occasionally something like Puff, where they have to just whittle bit by bit. Sheik still is capable of grabbing. She still combo off with dash attack. Usually it's a very wide window. And this could mm -hmm. very quickly go south for Whiskers. So here's All gonna right, 38. All right, 38% built up for the side of Fatty Acids. 136. Yo, she's still very tanky. We'll find his way back to ledge here. Air dodge the top platform. Does not get the initial shield, dro shield drop. And we'll have to refresh one more time. Air dodge will what not find great needles from Fatty Acids. Might have been the needle of Fatty S. It's a single grounded needle. Sometimes it's all that it needs. Yoshi is a very... And if you just hit the joints on Yoshi's recovery, he can just die so quickly. CC jab. 
All right, will not find the, cha the tech chase there, but a strong dash tech will seal it away. And it's a little bit more platform movement to boot Whiskers. We will lose two to take three. So we have to imagine, you know, there's a little bit of worried. Not only are they worried because they can't find their last player, so this might be the last two stocks of their whole crew battle, but can Whiskers take the remaining 12 with just these two? He has to four stock two different players mm -hmm. unless Blizzard comes back, and that is just a tall order. Mm -hmm. So just straight up four stocks to at least give himself the opportunity to, uh, to bring himself to a last game situation here. So El Pag, the Peach player. So this is the counter pick that we were talking about earlier. Definitely a very advantageous matchup for Peach. Um, and you have two Peach fans on commentary, so you definitely know a little yeah. bit about this matchup. Yeah, I think especially on the counter pick. You know, no FD. FD would certainly make this an insanely strong counter pick coming from Stony Brook. But I think still, getting to deny Yoshi a triplat stage makes this matchup very, very easy, I feel. I think really for somebody like Whiskers, where he's so strong with his movement, getting to cut off that sort of lane for movement is really going to simplify neutral for Elpag, and it's going to let him sort of just control space with turnups and float much more easy, much more easily. Yeah, so uh, we're going to have to imagine like where Elpag feels more comfor most comfortable. Elpag is definitely not a, not a slouch in his own right, so... We'll have to see how this matchup will shake out here. So two stocks of Whiskers, four of Elpag. Whiskers, absolute phenomenal. <laughs> absolute phenomenal threat here for the side of Columbia. And we just got to hope Blizzard Beam shows up, man. Yeah. You know, I'm sure they're all DMing him on Discord, pinging him, calling yeah. him, hoping he's not, you know, literally asleep at the wheel. Because I can imagine, you know, just... Yeah. <laughs> Just knocked, just out. <laughs> yeah, I think you definitely don't want to be known as the missing cruise guy. This reminds <laughs> me, uh, I, the, us, our University of Illinois, we were going to drive out to a, uh, oh, let's go Daisy. Um, we were going <laughs> to, we were going to go to like an Ohio CS element and we had everybody there and TRZ was just like in his apartment sleeping when we came to pick him up. <laughs> and then we, and we honked at him for like 30 minutes. And forever for that day, PRZ was the missed cruise guy. Did he literally he just, not show up to get to find someone else? He just slept through and then we just like didn't show up to the event because nobody else was up at like 6.30 to drive four hours to Ohio on a Saturday. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> That's outrageous. And, but the, the moral of the story is do not be the missed cruise guy. Yeah. Because like... When you're in cruise, you're not just playing for yourself, you're playing for the boys. And yeah. and I'll be honest, University of Illinois or Bottle Champagne, that crew is filthy. That crew is really strong. And it's been historically strong for years. So we're gonna have to go ahead and hop right back in here. Uh two socks of whiskers, four socks of L Pag. Battlefield? I feel like this is like see, this is actually like insanely scary for uh for L Pag. Because I remember playing whiskers and when I played whiskers. Playing Battlefield against him was such a struggle. He is so strong at leveraging that top platform to poke at Peach, even when she's like wave dashing all the way back to the stage. Mm -hmm. So, see how this plays out. I mean, Whisker seems very down to play the trading game, but as, you know, Peach at any moment can just get a down smash, can get like a turn of fair, and then chase down a double. So, yeah, see how like, this we're, like we're saying, this top platform movement putting in so much work, the noggin flogging will not quite take the stock away. But um, we're just going to let it rock with three more smash attacks, but none of them will quite connect. Great little knockdown onto the platform. Just going to wait out a corner pressure option here with the top oh, that movement. Was so Not only is he a mechanically talented Yoshi player, he's a mechanically talented Yoshi player from New York. You know he lives on this stage. Oh, like the shield pressure, Elpeg wisely rolling out. I wouldn't like to challenge Yoshi when he has such a strong fixed knockback down tilt. And especially that fair, too, can just eat crouch cancel if you're not careful. Ooh, good right, power. Cool. Yeah, I think Elpag is just, it almost feels like he's just playing cat and mouse, and he is just not ready for this sort of movement speed around all this. So much outrageous damage coming out from Whiskers. You know, it's, a, it's so crazy to see 
how many situations where most peaches would get an advantageous trade and whiskers with just beautiful micro spacing and movement is avoiding and getting these really clean aerial interactions um in yoshi versus peach and a clean stock with the noggin flogging dude i think i think this this battlefield pick i think it's uh i think we're seeing why i would not have uh not have gone here but i mean Elpeg, yeah, he just looks like he is just trying to do his best to wall out, but Whiskers is just being too fast relative to the speed that Elpeg can throw out hitboxes. And I think um, really what we have to see here, you just want to close out this first stop of Whiskers, honestly, at this point. Yeah, if you are Elpeg just taking once. Oh my god! That was so good. That was crazy. <laughs> Who goes for the egg lay there? What is savage? Okay, he gets that. So 92, right? This is the point when Peach gets to start like dictating the pace a bit more, just with the percent. And I think you really want to take this stock. This is you so can... scary. You know? Like we were saying earlier, Whiskers needs to four stock these players, and that is an option here. 102 percent built up, but has yet to see a stock count fall against the likes of Elpag with the knockdown. Two fairs, the <laughs> jab. Big percent built up, one more neutral interaction, and he's out of crouch cancel percent, and as I say it, 73% built up, 111 damage with the egg to bounce off one more time. Double jab into Nair, oh. will find his way back to oh, the Palmer saves him. Oh, he missed that jump. He is gone. I think you even just, you gotta go for like a, just a desperate like aggro. Maybe you can land on the edge there, I'm not sure. You at least give yourself an opportunity to say, give your, opposite, your opponent a chance to mess up with the fair to clean it up 1%. Tacked on from the parasol. Yeah. Whiskers yeah, was with a juicy three stock. Yeah. And I think, you know, this obviously is such a dominant game from Whiskers, but the crazy part is that I think Elpag did his job, honestly. Low-key, think... low-key. Yes, Elpag <laughs> definitely did his job. He just had to take one. Whiskers is good against floaties. He's really good against floaties. So it's like he definitely did his job. <laughs> you know, mad so love you have... to Elpag. That's hard. That's really hard. I would never shame you for getting three stocked by Whiskers and Peach Yoshi. That, especially on Battlefield, that's hard. <laughs> yeah, and I think now, um, basically every realistic Columbia win here involves Blizzard Beam waking up at the wheel. You know, somebody. Blizzard Beam is oh. awake. Blizzard Beam is here. Wait Whiskers Wait has. A to... <laughs> Wait just a minute, chat. Was, is this the comeback story? Is the Jigglypuff finally out of her rest animation? Absolutely crazy. So you Columbia have um, a just falcon. might do it. You have a falcon and a uh, fox. And a fox. Storm, the captain yeah, falcon amazing. player, is locking in here. So have to imagine, you know. I, I've seen Whiskers death combo Falcons and Foxes and Falcos, yeah. you know, it's... But then again, I've also seen Falcons just absolutely invalidate Yoshi players, so... Yeah. If he gets his bearings and just gets, like, one, like, just quick little stomp up air thing, I think mm -hmm. he'll be sick. What you just don't want is to get a big combo off the bat and then think, like, you as soon as you start thinking the Doomsday scenarios, mm -hmm. I feel like it's hard to catch back up mentally. <laughs> If Whiskers gets a 60% combo in the first 30 seconds of the match, it's just, it, it, there's honestly the, the four yeah. stock potential. It doesn't even have to be a death combo. It just has to be like a 60% like nasty combo. Yeah. And then suddenly Storm is like, oh shit, I just get four stock here. And especially a character like Falcon 2, you cannot play scared. Or like, you have to be willing to just move around and still, and just like play your game. If you get caught shielding, just running away, I think that's, has insane potential for a comeback here by Columbia. All right, Do we know so what yeah. stage uh, two? I imagine FD has to be the fan. Yeah, for sure. All right, looks like the warm up will be on Yoshi Sword. Just gonna go ahead and button check it up. Storm looking all right. He's hitting his uh his turnaround nares, turning and hitting the L cancel, so not too bad. Uh, of course, you know Whiskers' movement is way too clean. So I do love. The intercollegiate slippy skins on the stages, though. We have Piplup holding up the intercollegiate slippy logo in the background. That is way too cute. On uh, Dreamland, we have. Um, mm -hmm. You, go, you I always did... go Piplup Gen 4? I'm not a Gen 4 guy, but yeah. What? I'm okay. not, I, 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 Honestly, Gen 3 is the best gen. I'm sorry. Gen 3 is the best one. It's like Gen 3, Gen 1, 
Gen 4, and then Gen 2 is honestly kind of dog shit, if I'm honest. <laughs> okay. Agree to disagree. <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, we're not going to get into this, though. Maybe, maybe no, later. No, we're, maybe not. Later. we're not, we're not, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> Literally all the Gen 3 starters are so good. They're all amazing. Oh, in terms of star- just starters? Just starters? Okay. Just, uh, just starters? Gen 3 has the best starters. I think in general, Gen 1 has the best full cast, personally. Personally. Didn't ban- Okay, so actually, I was going to talk about how bad FD is for Yoshi. But at the same time, I'm thinking, the last time, I remember there's a set Amsa vs. Mango at SmashCon 2019. Game 5. Oh, okay, we're already getting into it, but Game 5, Amsa counterpicked to FD versus Falcon, character who I think would like to like FD even more than Falcon does. And he just mm-hmm. destroyed it. I think this is just like a, I trust my combos more than I think that you're actually oh gonna- Oh my do. god! Double forward tilt into a juicy hit, a down smash, and a juggle Uh-oh. here! This is what I was talking about earlier, chat. This could spell doom for the mental of Storm. 113 to 0 into- Oh my god, he covered the roll-in! Savage-ish. All right, double jump cancel in there. We'll just spell Doom here. Just grab ledge. Yes, sir. So you got to remember as Falcon sort of, I think the strength is against Yoshi is how much you can just aerial jab or just aerial run away. And Yoshi will really struggle because his movement is so like sort of angular where he needs to like get a lot of space on his first jump to really like challenge that. You got to just be willing to just use all this space, and it's not so much a battle of hitboxes as you need your dash to sort of, like, let you set up. And I think Storm, I mean, I was about to say uh, he wasn't doing that, but then he got, like, that crazy, like, he double jumped and he did three aerials, then he got a, uh-oh, no, oh, I thought he had maybe run out of his jump, bust his jump, and he got hugged there. All right, grab, yes, sir. Box. Now, it's, I honestly think that some mental damage may have been done because Storm missed a... Probably one of the easiest stop me's a Falcon man could probably hit earlier. So now, now Whiskers is on the chance to take three, and then maybe with some momentum take four. This is really scary if you're Storm, because Whiskers is kind of just running rampant right now. He missed the L cancel on that stop. I'm scared for Storm right now. He is really hoping one of these doubles. He's going, he's going, oh, no, no. For, he's going for full okay. stage after boost. This is really yeah, scary. <laughs> Oh, he just ran. He just, oh, he need and he taunted. I don't know about that taunt. You were, uh, you know what? At the same time, though, you just want to be innovative. So now you have a puff, right? Blue teams mm-hmm. a puff. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rose Falcon, there's some strong counter picks. But I think mm-hmm. we, we know that the Fox Puff is coming, right? And Fox I think Puff that, is coming. That's such a, like, on, this, on one hand, it's like the stage is going to be so good for Fox no matter what Blizzard Beam can ban. But at the same time, it's scary in Cruise. Like, as soon as it gets to even stocks, I think up throw rest is just the scariest thing in Cruise. Yeah. But- and it just becomes a battle of adaptation at that point because you have to understand it's like, I mean, back when wobbling was a thing, it's like if you saw an Ice Climbers or a Jigglypuff with just that, that one tap potential, so scary just because like you yeah. you know that like every single stock of yours is so outrageously valuable so you're avoiding only those setups and yeah especially with puff that's not all she has oh you know? definitely i mean i mean <laughs> you know, shout out to blizzard b for even waking up though so at least he has the yeah. chance to at least bring this back <laughs> and i mean six stocks especially with somebody like Falcon, especially during like this, uh, the counter pick game is that rest becomes unbelievably safe. I mean, really at, su- at this point, you know, the, the, the next game might be a different story and you might not be able to rest if you're down stocks, but here, here, it's still just like open season and you gotta, you gotta really be scared with storm. And I think especially the way that storm was playing was very, I'm going to double jump up. I want to just do aerials and throw at hit boxes. Puff can really, take advantage of that i think as falcon you really have to leverage your platform game so what happens next but we're just gonna have to see where our counter pick will take us i'm imagining dreamland will be the ban so maybe a fountain of dreams oh actually maybe dreamland will be left up and fountain of dreams might be the counter pick or might be the ban so have to see where we're going hopefully blizzard beam is all set up and ready to rumble and while we're getting set up guys please just one more reminder 
Please use those channel points. Donate them to the channel point goal. You can win actual cash prizes, ladies and gents. Real money by the end of the circuit. The most the people who have donated the most points will earn actual cash prizes. Also, if you subscribe with Twitch Prime or just subscribe to the channel, you earn 2.5 times the amount of points as a non-subscribed channel member would. So it's quite literally could make an investment of plus $95 for the first place prize of the most channel points being donated. So if you guys are enjoying the stream, please follow. Please drop us a sub. Thank you guys so much for the followers. Minor Unlimited Peanuts and Gav following very recently. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. If you guys are a Columbia fan, if you're a Stony Brook fan, I hope I'm glad you're spending your evening with us. We're going into a four stocks to six stock situation. Blizzard Beam was previously MIA and is now back from hiatus, ready to bring us home. All comes down to this. And uh, do we know what stage this is going to be played on? Um, the ban is Ooh. FOD, so I'd imagine Dreamland would be the shot here. But we'll have to see if that's the the kind of work that Blizzard Beam would like. But you know, being a Colum being a uh, New York player, <laughs> Battlefield's always an option. Oh, it yeah. would be so. It ended up being the Battlefield for the last game. That'd be so. Sad. It'd just be the only ended. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I I'll, I'm that guy at every tournament that's like, "Yo, Battlefield for the start." I don't even want to RPS. I'm just like, "Dude, Battlefield. Let's, let's just run it." Especially against Marth. Dude, there's literally two Marth players in my locals in Cincinnati where the will RPS and if I win, we just go to Battlefield. And if they lose, <laughs> they make me they make they want the chance to pick between Battlefield and Yoshi's or Battlefield and FOD or whatever. I'm just like, yeah. dude, like we know how the striking's gonna go. If I win, we're gonna go to Battlefield because you no know, Marth Peach, whatever. <laughs> All right, Dreamland will yeah, be the that. lock. All right, guys. Let's see some. Let's look at the chat here. Well, who are we feeling? Will Blizzard Beam go from asleep at the wheel to the the hero that Columbia deserves, or is Stony Brook gonna tap it in with the combination of Storm and Red Matic? Let's see some hype in the chat, boys. Again, I love my Stony Brook crowd. You guys always don't disappoint. Love it. This is all what Cruz is about. It's about that team support. Mm -hmm. SPU. SPU. He was celebrating his mom's birthday. Give the man a break. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, happy birthday to Blizzard Beam's mom. Hope she had a great time. Um, Sorry, Mom. I have to play some collegiate Smash Brothers. I'm sure you'll understand. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to clutch up for the boys. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, thank you to Pat Attack for letting us know that. You know, again, happy birthday to Blizzard Beam's mom. Gets again, yeah, happy birthday, Puff Mom. Let's go. Happy birthday to Blizzard's mom. That's so sweet. Hoping that um she had a great past year, regardless of everything else going on. She made it to another birthday despite the pandemic and the capital yeah. being stormed and all that sort of craziness but no we're here we're celebrating birthdays we're playing melee on the weekends with the boys love to see it absolutely let me see <laughs> oh kind Lord. Of interesting point is that um because there's no time limit because it's cruise and mm -hmm. when I'm thinking about Falcon Peach on Dreamland, I'm kind of thinking about that time Xbox just shamelessly ledge camped Wizrobe at um at like CEO Grand Finals. Maybe you kind of throw that out, or maybe you like try and trick Storm into like falling for something obvious here. I don't know. Could be an option. You could definitely play the clock here. Hope we'll have to see uh, what kind of um what kind of game plan that um that blizzard beam will take into account here so i just noticed i have a 432 points accumulated here 
So I'm just going to go ahead and um, donate those back to the college spring. We're at our tier two goal already for the spring 2021 circuit prices of 12,888 points have been donated with the goal of a hundred K. So let's keep it moving, ladies and gents. And we're still early in the season too. There are a lot of crew battles left. Yeah, we're on, we're on week one guys. We've already met, met our first goal. Let's keep it rolling. We have our Discord quote of the day ready to roll. <laughs> Pat Attack, just letting him know I gave him the wrong time. This is on me. Pat Attack, just be like, all right, you know, this is my bad, guys. Sorry, I told Blizzard it'd be probably an hour later. Honest mistake. It happens. It happens. What's the minimum number of points you can donate? I just won. You can donate as many as you want. <laughs> I think you might have that backwards maybe what the maximum is, but I'm pretty sure you can just donate just one if you want to. <laughs> oh man. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm so happy to have be spending my weekend with you. We have much more melee to be played. This evening as well, uh, we have um, South Carolina versus University of Maryland coming up right after this. So if you guys are fans of any of these players, we've got Kraft the Fox player, Unanimous versus Unanimous the Marth, Say, or I'm sorry, yes, yeah, Say, I remember how to pronounce that. The Fox player, Lucy the Falco and Faz the Captain Falcon versus the University right. of Maryland's own food playing the Fox. Tyler Swift, the second best Pikachu in the United States behind our very own uh, Tempo Storm's Axe. Uh, Purple Dolphin, Ooh, the Falco gracious. player. Yurt, the Marth, and Dow, the Fox. So if you guys are a fan of some top-tier Pikachu gameplay, and I believe he's also um, has switched to the Box full-time, so Box Pikachu potentially will be With on the, the docket. Yep. It's just, like, so scary. It's kind of like if you should, like, imagine, like, you see somebody driving next to you on the highway and like this sleeked out Lamborghini or something. Somebody, it's just like, that's kind of like the, the present. It's just like, you don't know what this guy is capable of, but he's going to be doing some like crazy shit, crazy stuff, no matter what. And, um, oh, flexing. Like, 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 like the click clack. My floats cancel up airs are sick. <laughs> Instant float against up there at a shield should not be a thing. It is. <laughs> it is on that. <laughs> I mean, up there at a shield, too, with, like, Pikachu. It's, like, something that quick. That's mm. honest. Insane potential. Like, the angles, too. I mean. All right. Well, looks like we're uh, waiting for the game, trying to get loaded in real quick. You know, again, shout out to Blizzard Beam's mom. Hoping she no. had um, a, a delicious steak dinner. Maybe a, a a beautiful tall glass of wine. Um, spent the day with loved ones, yeah. um, especially our, our our own Blizzard Beam. So super hyped for that. Oh, we're in that, it. Uh, we're in it. All right, we're in. All right. Blizzard Beam locked in. We have movement on the screen. Let's go, Stony Brooks are popping in the chat from Kikatsky. Shout out to Kikatsky, one of my favorite tags, actually. It just feels very oh, good I, to say. Yeah. Good tag to say. Mid dinner right now. Wait, really? They were in the middle of eating? Oh, no. Dude. Dude, this is called You Put the Game Above Everything Else. It's like. <laughs> 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 If my wife and SBU both ask me to dinner, catch me chatting. <laughs> I love my seawolves. <laughs> I actually, now that I remember it, um, I was a swimmer in high school. One of my teammates ended up uh, swimming for um, Stony Brook. I actually remember that. That's how I remember this university. Stony Brook? Hmm? Is that like uh, a... D2? D3? I mean, still though. Yeah, like any honestly level. Yes. Like, yeah, but it's still like insane. Mm. So, shout outs to the Sea Wolves. 
Big ups to them. Pizza Boxer Gaming. Shout outs to you for that follow. I appreciate it, my mans. And Falcon punching off screen. We're in it, ladies and gents. Blizzard Beam is moving. The controller's in hand. Two stocks need to be taken to send us to a last player situation here. Blizzard Beam locked and loaded. Let's get underway. So you can definitely see that. Um... Uh oh. Okay. Up tilt. I'm really so... interested he didn't go for the rest there. Got two juicy yeah, up tilts. Oh, yeah, I think he went for another one even. Uh oh. Shield grab. Uh oh. Right, Punish it. Up. Lazy Falcon jump back. Okay. The mom birthday power up. Uh-oh. Shout out to mom. Oh! Wait! Oh, is it he's uh -oh. Okay! Shout out to mom's <laughs> Blizzard Beam? He definitely it's definitely that uh might be that anime protagonist effect. He has everybody, he has his family, they're all giving him his energy. He's, it's he's literally gonna come through. It's like all those war movies where like the colonel shows up and the dude's like, I'm tired. I left that life behind me. <laughs> Need you one more time. <laughs> one time. Literally sitting at the dinner table with his family. It's like, guys, I'm sorry. I promised I would never go back to this life. For and one now, more time. He, My country needs me. From the get-go, this is tough. Last last player cruise. This is like four just like Oh, <laughs> uh, coffee! <laughs> Stop disconnecting. <laughs> oh my god! It's fine. It's fine. We're back. We're back. You know, like like coffee was saying, we got Puff Fox. It's that game five. It's that last stock. It's that H box versus Leffen Grand Finals. It's it's that feel. <laughs> we're at the end. We're here. We're ready to rumble. Red Matic versus Blizzard Beam. Blizzard Beam has the mom birthday power up, and I don't think Red Matic's prepared. Oh, yeah. I think, like, I mean, you can say all that you want about the matchup. You can say anything about characters and strategy, but it just comes just one game of melee. Mm -hmm. All of it is led here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are at a four stock to four stock situation. We have a counter pick advantage for the side of Red Matic. Ideally, we'll be choosing between the side of Final Destination and Pokemon Stadium or Yoshi's Story. Oh my God, he has so many good. He has so many right, good stages. Yeah, stages so and good I feel stages. like I feel like without any prior info, I think Pokemon is like probably the hardest counter pick. But at the same time. You know, I think Pokemon, it also just gives space, gives like Puff maybe the space to just like chill the nerves a bit. And that might just be the little edge. And he might just want to have that over FD. Maybe he's just afraid of getting dash dance cams. Oh, it's really oh, look at the dis <laughs> Look at the Discord. <laughs> oh, no. Sad story. I have two stocks, by the way. No problem. How many stocks? Post game. How many stocks? <laughs> That's some savage oh. shit. That's crazy. Blizzard beams on some new ish. <laughs> I love that. Let's keep that going. Let's go. Blizzard beams on him. Love that. <laughs> Do we know the ban yet? FD Ooh. will be our final destination. FD is literally the final destination oh, yeah. of this crew battle. Looks like we're going to have a great time, ladies and gentlemen. I'm glad you stuck around, kept around yeah. for the long haul. It is 9 p.m. on a Saturday night, and we're here enjoying some melee. Love to yes. see it. All right, final destination. Mm. All right, broadcast is being set up real quick. So, guys, can we just honestly say how incredible of a time that we're living in that we have la borderline lagless melee from 
New York all the way to like we we literally had a matchup that was Southern California to New York earlier, and it was looking really good. Like it looked yeah. extraordinarily playable. And not only do we have that, we now have just like stream like seamless integration with streams and other things. I mean, even before spectator mode, sometimes you wouldn't even be able to like see matches as they happened, and you'd have to like some you know somebody's PC doesn't work this or that. But now you can put it all together with Slippy and with spectator mode, and it's we're just here. This could have just been a realistic normal CSL crew battle last year. Mm-hmm. Nobody made a difference. Absolutely, you know. Thank God for that to Slippy and Fizzy and the Slippy team for doing all this work, guys. If you haven't got, if you're lit up, lived under a rock for the last year, um, Fizzy and the Slippy team have developed lagless online melee through rollback connectivity. So if you guys don't have this downloaded, I would invite you to go to your search bar right above you and type slippy.gg and go ahead and download the build and join us in the Slippy era. It's free to download, but I would strongly recommend that you go ahead and donate a little bit to either his Patreon or donate a little bit during the download process. There is an option to do that as well because running the server is not free, guys. Running the server is not free, and it is done out of the graciousness of Slippy as well. Also, there is a small organization called Peppy on Twitter as well, and they have running a monthly every single month. Obviously, it's a monthly. And all the proceeds from the tournament will go to a direct donation to the Slippy team for the express purpose of keeping the server running. So mad love to all you guys. I hope that um, you guys can go ahead and join us in the Slippy era. Join us in the Intercollegiate Slippy Discord. And let's have some fun playing Melee, guys. I miss all you guys going out to tournaments. So let's play some Melee while we can. Definitely. He's just just one guy. One guy better than Nintendo. Well, it's not (laughs) a team. It's like a team. But they're still better than Nintendo. Because of that and because of all the work he puts in, and with the help of the scene, we get stuff like this. Mm -hmm. We get these hype crew battles. Mad love to Fizzy and everyone who's putting this together. All right. Blizz should have the broadcast up, ready to go. We're getting some Pat Attack um, updates in the chat. Thank you so much to Pat. And uh, hopefully we can get ourselves underway again. Shout-outs to Blizzard Beam's mom. Big ups on her birthday. I'm sorry that we've dragged her son away from the dinner table <laughs> to make him play Melee. Yo, shout outs to Danny Pizza for the follow and to Purple Dolphin. Condi. Oh, Condiphone? The. Con, 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 con. Don't think about it. Don't think I, about I'm it. I'm not. I'm not going to. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. It's. I, I'm I'm usually really good at reading things and speaking words because it's kind of like my my kind of my shtick, but I, I that literally threw me for a loop. Katsuki, I know how to say that one. Top jam. Thank you so much for the follow, guys. You guys are gonna make me read things. Yurt, follow. Thank you. Oh, Appreciate is, uh, it. Is father? Is father? No, this is just warm up. They're playing on it. Okay. <laughs> Appreciate all the follows, guys. You guys are awesome. <laughs> Can we get a progress for UMD? There you go. Anything for you, bud. Anything for you, Yurt. Poggers no. for the sick Pikachu we're about to witness. Guys, d- please do not leave. We have more melee coming at you guys right after. We have South Carolina versus University of Maryland. And right after that, we have UCB versus University of California, South um, San Diego. So we have some really great melee popping up right after we see Blizzard Beam, the conclusion of Blizzard Beam versus Red Matic, Columbia versus Stony Brook. So Misty, thank you so much for the. You're so Misty, so Misty. I'm gonna say so Misty. Thank you so yeah. much for the follow. Appreciate it. So Misty, so Misty. Let's go, Otto. Let's like. go, Pat Attack. So I think here, this is one of the cases where being on Slippy actually changes the meta a lot because you'll never spawn close to the other character. So we're already at this range fight, and it definitely shows that like Regmatic is already showing that he wants to play this like long range Armada type game. Oh, oh, back throw. 
is not the back throw you want to see uh, for Columbia. All right, Blizzard Beam already doing out so much positional pressure with these micro movements as well as these um, walling hitboxes. Already at 52%. Oh my god, that movement! Wow. That was cool. Dude, Blizzard Beam kind of smoothing. You Wait, you never Blizzard Beam's nutty! Wait, Blizzard Beam's like uh, the yeah, cleanest I've seen the last 24 hours. Oh no, oh no, the Sakurai! Oh. I mean, you know, that's one thing if it's like you're uh, like a Samus or something, but that's actually like huge damage. That's like, mm. a, like a third of a stock, honestly. Mm. And forward smash, yeah, now this is where it gets tough. It's tough. You cannot fall into this trap of going for F smashes and risky moves trying to get a kill. But at the same F -smash, time- F smash, dash attack, up smash, drill up smash. Yeah. It gets a little bit predictable. So just rinse and repeat back air, setting up for edge guards is definitely yeah. the move here. That looks like exactly what Blizzard's uh -oh, going tournament for. Winner? You know, it's what, you know, it's just a tournament winner, but. We as commentators, we gotta wonder if nerves are creeping in here for Red Matic. Hmm. I'm not the character you can afford to get nervous with. Yeah. You know? Red Matic does have the percent Ooh, deficit here. Ooh, slowing that up there, that's, that's such a bad feel. Oh, he uh -oh. snaps it out! Pound! Grabs it, one more refresh, gets the grab, oh. no, no grab attempt. Okay, so now we gotta see what kind of confirms does Red Matic have up this sleeve. You know he's gonna wanna confirm into like, uh oh, dash attack. You gotta yeah, know that he is playing so confident here. Absolutely yeah, this crazy. This is this is the magic. power up that we're seeing. Uh oh. Okay. Fair grab. The the cheese doesn't work, but he's still looking really good. And now once you get past like yeah like this percent where you can shield safely, you know you can't just uh, kill directly. That kind of makes this matchup almost easier. But mm -hmm. you know that up is gonna come through. It's a one stock as Red Matic. You just gotta hope that uh. You, know, you keep it solid, you're able to find a way, just get a quick stock in maybe. And if you you're, if you're oh, a Blizzard what? Beam here, you can definitely start looking for aggressive rest setups because you do have that buffer stock to deal with. Uh-oh, big up smash attempts. No grab, yeah. Red Matic is definitely playing like very, uh-oh. Okay, so I think if Blizzard Beam is able to like even just shield an up smash, you can just rest out of shield or you can do something crazy. And, um, that really would put Rematic on the back foot. You, like as Fox, you cannot be telegraphed with these kill confirms. All right, we'll not get the strong hit of up smash here. One more um, big confirm like that will probably spell doom for second stock of Blizzard Beam. Rematic at 87% himself, so one big juicy edge guard sequence could be like we're uh -oh, seeing he, he just, about the jump. He does not. He just okay, stays patient. Even stocks. Yeah. Right, even stocks here, but 97% built up. I think Red Matic, he's found his footing. All right, one juicy backer. We'll set up for an edge guard sequence for the side of Blizzard Beam. All right, we'll find the grab. Edge guard sequence builds up. All right, one refresh. Fair does not jumping anymore. He's not finding those jumps that he found on stock number one and two. So uh, Red Matic yeah. is mixing up his recovery options. So great adjustments there coming out for the side of Stony Brook. All right, Scott's uh -oh. out looking for the roll. Does not roll find it. Is that an off throw up air? Oh no, all of a sudden, Red Matic, it looked like he was on the back foot, he was flubbing, and all of a sudden, he has just caught Blizzard Beam. He's keying too much in onto like just a few tiny things, thinking he'll do them every time. The adaptation in this one scenario, this could mean everything. All right, last uh, situation, who has discovered more? Who has learned the habits? We have seen adaptations from the side of Red Matic's uh, offensive and defensive good. game. 34% already just in lasers. This is huge for Red Matic. Oh, oh fair. Up the rest of oh, now. Oh, it's, he's living. Oh, okay. Grab. Oh, that's so scary. Oh, on smash. Oh my goodness, soft hit there. Oh, he finds the grab. Oh, out. Jeremy said, yes, no, no, oh, the skin of his teeth. Dude, that's gonna, that's, that's, uh, that's nightmares. That's nightmares. <laughs> oh no. Oh, that may have been, dude, Red Maddox's life was flashing before his eyes. That is like, <laughs> how do you, how, I, what emotions, everybody is just confused. He had had it, jabbed him, it was all set up and it just, just didn't hit. Just didn't go. What an ending to an exciting crew battle. Stony Brook oh University will take it home. Big clutch situation for Red Matic.
He brought like he was at a, almost two stock deficit at one point that game. Brought it all the way back to last stock. Played that last stock so outrageously patiently. Got so much damage with chip, and you know uh, he, he 